The Maruti 800, it sold in great numbers, we all know that. In 29 years, they sold 26 lakh cars, that's an equivalent of 250 cars a day, every day. The Alto, on the other hand, has sold 30 lakh cars in just 15 years, and that's an equivalent of 550 cars a day. And that, ladies and gentlemen, makes this the most selling car of one of the world's biggest hatchback markets. Welcome guys, welcome to Power Drift. Let's have a quick little look at this quick little car. Clearly, the Alto has been a very important car for Maruti. So much so that they eventually decided to discontinue their iconic but aging Maruti 800. If I were to draw an analogy, then if the Maruti 800 was this, then the first Alto was this. Today, 15 years down the line, in its latest avatar, the Alto k has become this. This might not be our latest flagship smartphone, not have the biggest screen or the fastest of the Snapdragon processor. But functionally, it'll do everything you need to be doing from your phone. And in most cases, even last you longer. Like most of us, I learned my driving on a Maruti 800 and it's been a while since I sat in an Alto. So when I first sat in the Alto K10, I was pleasantly surprised. I mean by no standards is this the interior of an entry level hatchback. You have a black piano finished dashboard with a built in audio system that plays CD, USB and aux. You get power steering, front to power windows and air conditioning as standard. Also, you have a couple of smart storage spaces here and there and this one litre bottle holder tucked in neatly. And the general fit and finish is above acceptable levels. But the star of the movie lies in here. The automated manual transmission, which Maruti likes to call AGS or Auto Gear Shift. For years, the Indians have ran away from automatic transmissions because A, they're expensive, B, they're costly to repair, but most importantly, they don't give us what we Indians love the most fuel economy. In that sense then, the AGS is a true Indian jugaad for an automatic transmission because fundamentally it is still a manual transmission without the hassle of a clutch pedal. Alright, so to get going, you crank the engine with the gear lever in N, press the brake pedal, shift it to D and let go of the brake. From here on, it is as simple as a point and shoot camera. You steer the car and then you press the accelerator to go forward and press the brake to slow down. Maruti has been all guns with the AGS technology and it seems to be working. 30% of the Alto k sold today are the AGS variant and one fourth of these are women drivers. Here in bumper to bumper traffic is exactly where you start to vasulo that roughly 50,000 you pay over the VXI variant. You don't really have to think which gear are you crawling in. You can just be at ease and as you get an open stretch of road, you can shift it to manual and then decide how much do you want to drag every gear to. You could be revving in the second gear all the way till 85 or be shifting to fifth and be driving at ease. And all this while your left foot, well, just like in proper automatics, is free to tap away to music. Now, a car in this segment is not really designed for performance or the luxury it offers, but it's purely functional and that's what the Alto is. I don't really see a point in dissecting things too deep, so let's talk in bullet points. Drivability. Well, it's perfectly maneuverable with its size, easy to park or to take those U-turns. Here on the highway, it becomes a little floaty past 100 kmph. But till 100, it's planted, it's confident. Alright, next, comfort. Well, the suspension, like all small cars, is tuned for city, so it soaks up bumps pretty well. The seats, they open, decent enough side bow string, there's some thigh support. Nothing really to complain. The auto gear shift. It does have a rubber band effect, so you feel a gear change like this. Is it a fair trade-off? Well, if you ask me, it's more than fair given the convenience it offers. 
This runs the K-series engine, the K10, which is a lightweight aluminium engine, very robust, bulletproof reliability. It is compact, but most importantly, it is fuel economical. Maruti says you get 24 to a litre, ARA is specified. Well, if you're gentle with your throttle, 18 to 19 is achievable fuel economy. You, of course, get slightly higher on the 800 version, but on the K10, since the AGS is only 5 kilos heavier, you get the same fuel economy of 18 or 19. You also get a CNG variant, which gives you 32 to a kg of gas, but again, it doesn't come with an AGS. Lastly, with 755 kilos of weight and 68 PS of power, it almost has a power to weight ratio of 86 HP per ton. And if the numbers don't interest you, forget it, it's as fast or almost as fast as the Swift. Fun fact, this won the order for 2014 and 15 in the stock category. So all I'm trying to say is, it's not a boring car to drive. Well, if we are to talk of things which are shortcomings for the Alto, then I'll say it's not very generous with space. There's just about enough space for a six-footer like me in the front seat. But if I'm sitting there, there isn't enough space for another six-footer like me to be sitting in here comfortably. But what Marathi has done interestingly is that they've scooped the rear of these seats out to give you these extra two inches of legroom. Even with that, the cabin has just enough space for about four adults and not five. Speaking of space, is then the boot. Let's have a look at the boot. At 177 litres, it's not the biggest in the class, but it's not all that tiny either. But if I was to look at one shortcoming in the Alto, a particular one, then I would say that the manual VXI optional variant lets you buy an optional airbag, while the Auto gear shift variant doesn't. And that's something Malti should look into ASAP. But then none of this is a deal breaker, ladies and gentlemen. The Alto still makes for a perfect choice for a first time car buyer, even for a second time car buyer. The Alto today rivals Hyundai Zeon, Tata's Nano, Renault Quid, and the Datsun Go. Between these five, quite interestingly, it is neither the cheapest nor the most fuel economical, certainly not the most spacious, and I would say not the best looking either. But then what is it that makes the Alto sell like the Alto sells? I was inquisitive to find out and I so walked myself to a Maruti showroom and I was surprised to know After the 20,000 rupee down payment, you could own one for as little as 2,500 rupees a month and maintain one at rupees 5 a day at one of Maruti's 3,000 plus service centers. If you're looking for a trust of reliability, then one of Maruti's 20 million customers would happily stand by and vouch for it. By the time you've finished up watching this video, Maruti Suzuki has already got two new Altos to this world awaiting new owners. If you've liked the video, please press the like button and if you can think of any other reason what makes the car sell so much, enlighten us in the comment section below. I think there's too much gyan for now, so goodbye. One third of the Altos sold today in the K10 variant are with AGS. And one fourth of these cars are women drivers. Practically, it is impossible to stall this car. Just saying. Sorry, mom. Where are you?